Hi everyone, David Maley here, and today I'm going to show you how to do some really quick mapping of data and locations and latitudes and longitudes and click sense. And there's a reason for it. So even though you guys have seen my videos and seen where I can create some really cool graphs in R and I've got some great process for that, well this last week we ran into a problem. IT released a patch uh, that screwed up a lot of stuff and made it so that uh, every connection I had with the internet through R wouldn't work if I was docked in. I didn't find it out till later. It would only work if I was undocked and I was on the Wi-Fi, which was really bizarre. But and we fixed that later on. But let me tell you, so when you're in a situation where you've got to get something done, you got to get it to people in half an hour, you need to get something there. Quick click sense is a really quick way to do that. So basically I have a lot of videos out there to show you how to use it. You go in and create a new application. I've called it US Furniture Sales. The data source that I'm using here for an example, what I did was I took, I had, uh, there's a video out there where I have world furniture sales and I just took and filtered it to just USA. So I've got, you know, state, city, uh, and transactions unit sales, latitude and longitude. You need to have latitude and longitude for this to work in ClickSense. Okay, you can easily get this through numerous different sources. If you don't have latitude and longitude, you can get it off the internet. You can find a data uh, example like this and do this. And let me show you something here. So I put ClickSense back up here. And so what I'm going to do is I've created an app. And I've got videos that will walk you through that. But basically what you do is you create a web part. So if I go to edit right here, you would go and bring map over. Okay. And then as your measure, you're going to pick your, uh, in this case, cities. Okay. Or latitude and longitude. And it'll work off that. And so like, see, here's my dimension is city. So it shows me all the cities, right? that I have on this and I can blow I can zoom in and zoom out once I hit done and what's most important here is I don't just want city because if I just had city I can change the bubble size if I want make them bigger make them much smaller if I want it's up to you know how I want it to display if I have a lot of them close together I might want to make the bubble size smaller because otherwise look what happens they get hidden and I don't really know what's behind some of these so by making it smaller I can kind of identify you know some areas where there's a lot more in there that I need to see then what I want to do is I want to go down to the appearance section. So see, like I can't add a layer with this in this case. Like I can in R, I can have multiple different variables showing, which is nice. But in this case, I just have to get this data out quickly. So they need to identify some stores or some locations. So the idea here is we're going to identify some locations really quick, and we have one variable, so sales. So how do I bring that in? So we go down here to appearance, and... Uh, we go down here to uh, way down here, colors and legend, and see this. So instead of doing a layer up above, what I'm doing is I'm doing the same thing here. So I've added by measure here. So this colors and legend normally it would just say this, and uh, oh, what happened there? There it is. It, if I do auto, it just doesn't really. It just shows me the cities, right? It's all I've got now. Cities. That's the way it comes in when you first build this. It looks kind of kind of boring and dull. So what you want to do is you want to click on this to custom, right? And then what I want is by measure. So the measure has to be one of the measures. So I have, obviously, I have sales, transactions, units. So you would do, you know, like sum of sales, okay? Sum of transactions, sum of units. And you might want to identify them by that. And then what I've got here is because I'm doing by measure, not by dimension, you have a choice of, you know, by dimension, by measure, by expression. By measure means I get to show this gradient here. And what I can do is I can show the diverging classes, which means that here's the lowest point of any of those cities, and here's the highest point in sales, because I picked sales. If I pick transactions, to be, you know, transactions. And what's neat about that is I can quickly identify and give this to people. I could snapshot this. Uh, I can show them on my computer, you know, and figure out what level of detail they want to go to. And um, I can, so let, we've got this done, right? So now let's go to done. And now they can come over to my desk and take a look at this. And they can say, okay, let's, let's zoom in. Maybe they don't want to see Alaska and stuff. Maybe they do want to see that. Maybe they just want to zoom in on the uh, state so you can zoom in. All we got to do is hit the plus or scroll up with your mouse or down, you know, to get the right zoom angle that you want. Maybe they just want to see this. And they want to identify, you know, obviously here's our heat, you know, the uh, measures right here. So anything that's in red or or orangish is going to be high and the blues are going to be low. So they can pick out and look at, you know, like here's a high point and here's a low point. Okay. And it'll actually, what's nice about this, see as I mouse over it, it'll actually tell me the city and it'll tell me the sales. 
So I, you know, I know the range it's in by looking at the color, but I get the definite, you know, response here. Baltimore had high furniture sales, furniture part sales. That's what this data is. And it gives me exact sales figure and the city. So I can go and look, here's Providence, Rhode Island. They had high furniture set part sales, maybe. You know, I, I don't know why, but that's what this data shows. And then I can zoom in more if I want to see, by getting to this level, I actually see the city names located so I can actually quickly see them instead of having to mouse over each area. And then it tells me exactly what it is. So here's Atlanta. Atlanta has very low sales compared to, what's this city here? Knoxville, Tennessee has very high sales. Maybe there is a, see this is furniture part sales, so these are probably sold wholesale to manufacturers. So maybe that means that a manufacturer is here in Knoxville, and that's why they buy so many here. And maybe there's a manufacturer near this area right here in Alabama, Mobile, Alabama, that has a very high level, 2.12 million in sales. Okay, or they're, maybe they're near, you know, so you could see how there, there might be a uh, manufacturer nearby some of these areas. So that's what this does. And I can then go and use click if I wanted to. I could rope in an area and zoom in further. I can, you know, let's say I just wanted to look at New York. I got another click here and zoom in on it. Um, I can zoom in like that. And there we go. We got how many dots do we have in there? We actually have two. See, as you zoom in, you start to see more stuff that if you zoomed out or you had big bubbles, you wouldn't be able to see them. So I actually have two dots here. I have one for Jersey City and one for New York City. Okay. And I have one for Philadelphia. Apparently Philadelphia is a hot spot. New York is not. So maybe this is near a uh, manufacturing facility. So that's how this works. And I could then snapshot this. Maybe they want to see something like this. So I could take, you know, any of the various different programs and I could actually just say, okay, let's just take this area right here. And I could zoom in and take that and then give it to them. Maybe that's what they want to identify. It could be anything. Okay. I could do that. I could uh, go over here, and there it is. There's my snapshot through Snagit Editor. But there's different ways to do that. And uh, then again, I could zoom out. I can either zoom out by clicking or by, you know, scrolling with the mouse. And that was a quick way to get around a problem. See, in data science and data analysis, a lot of times we're just trying to get data from all kinds of different sources. We run into different problems. Sometimes IT causes issues like they did this time, so I wasn't able to run the R processes for in the time frame that I had to get this data to the executives that needed it. So it's the ability of having multiple applications available to you and be able to say, okay, this one doesn't work, this doesn't work, I've got 10 minutes left, what can I do? Now this is not as nice as some of the R graphs I do where it brings in Google Maps and it would show the roads or it shows the, the mountain regions and things like that, but it gives them everything that they needed and I had a very limited time frame doing it. So having this ability is awesome to be able to go between different maps. So you want to have something, a tool like Tableau or ClickSense on tap and your ability to be able to do something like this. So you can quickly go, hey, I, the R is not working today. The uh, code's not working. The server it's on is not working. Uh, here, I have this locally on my computer. Boom, put the data in and here we go. And again, the data I used in this case, I just filtered down the international uh, furniture sales, part sales that I had that I showed in other videos. And we just filtered it down to US uh, locations. Obviously you can see that if I were to take this and zoom it out, obviously we have no sales over in Europe, uh, no sales in Canada, and no sales in South America, and that's because we've only filtered to the USA. Okay, very simple and easy to do. Uh, that part we did in Excel, and uh, the, the rest is just done in ClickSense here. It's very simple, quick, and easy to do. Thanks again for watching. Please take a moment to like and subscribe and also leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you like, what you don't like, what you'd like to see, what you wouldn't like to see. Uh, you know, I make this vi these videos and this uh, video site for you guys. This is to help you guys because the data science community has been very good to me and I've learned a lot from it over the past you know, bit and what I want to do is this is my way of giving back. So I want to show you the processes of what I've learned and what we use every day in data science and data analysis. So thanks again for watching. Please subscribe and like and have a great day. Thanks.